What is going on guys, Pat in the shop, and this video is going to be the parts breakdown for L31 Vortec headed LT4 cam. 350 we got here. This thing made over 400 horsepower uh, and a lot of you guys are building similar combinations and want the part numbers. So this video is going to be giving some part numbers and also some options. Let's check it out. A couple things before we get started. If you haven't seen the dyno video, you might as well go and watch that first because this is just kind of a boring video including the part numbers and stuff. But if you're building an engine like this, this, and this video will might be of value to you and maybe take the 15 minutes and just watch through it. I'm also going to be talking about some other combinations that we got coming up for our Vortec headed engines. Uh, I know you guys love the Vortec heads as much as I do, a lot of you guys. Uh, so we're going to be kind of ramping things up. This will be the base. We're going to do more compression, more cam, then more compression, more cam, uh, and maybe try some other stuff too. So uh, we got two other engines in the works right now, just waiting for a few more parts. Uh, so it'll be this will be a stage one, stage two, stage three. It'll be kind of neat to see. Uh, so that's going to be included in this video as well. So make sure you watch through it if you're interested in building something like this. And uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. So let's get started here. We're going to start from the bottom. The oil pan. This is just a stock replacement oil pan. SKP oil pan. You can buy it at Rock Auto, wherever. The pan's like 30 bucks. So about the cheapest you can get. 30 bucks for a pan. Oil pan gasket. Uh, is from Engine Tech. That brings me up to my next thing. A lot of these re rebuild parts are from a company called Engine Tech. Make sure you check those guys out. Uh, they rebrand a lot of parts and just sell it at just amazing par uh, prices. So they'll, you'll get it in their box, but they'll be, say, for example, the bearings we used on these are King bearings. Their, their bimetal bearings are just rebox King bearings. I've run King bearings. I love King bearings. I use them on a lot of my rebuilds. And I've talked about this in other videos. But if, you have, if you're not familiar with Engine Tech, make sure you check those guys out. They, they, their parts, pretty much everything I've used, I've had no issues with. And like I said, it's mostly rebranded stuff. The rings, the rings in this engine are from them. But we'll go with that. Okay, oil pan, uh, pan gasket from Engine Tech. That was like 14 bucks. Uh, oil pan stud kit. Check this part number out, Canton stud kit. I'll put a part number and a little picture up in the description. 17 bucks for that. Uh, I did put a Melling high volume oil pump on this. I already had it in stock with a three quarter pickup. The oil pump shaft is a Melling, 10 bucks. Oil filter adapter, I had one laying around, but it's just a regular small block Chevy oil filter adapter. The regular uh, Vortec ones, they'll have like the, the, the spot for an oil cooler. So you'll have to get some bolts and an oil filter adapter. I'll put a picture up and I'll try to put a part number. And obviously, I, like I always recommend, especially during break-in, plug the bypass on your oil filter adapter. It saved me a few times with cam failures on flat tappets and stuff, but also just break-in with, with debris coming through the engine. Make sure all the oil goes through the oil filter. Uh, I use the factory windage tray. This is a stock of um, two bolt main block. Uh, and that brings me to the what I was gonna say about that. I've got this block off Kijiji, which is like Craigslist. Uh, it was 300. Uh, US. So I, like, I pay in Canadian, obviously we're in Canada, but I'm going to give you all American pricing because a lot of the stuff you order on Summit stuff is all going to be in American pricing. So I'm just, everything I talk about is in USD. So just keep that in mind. So the block was 300 US. Um, the, I used the stock crankshaft, which was in fantastic shape. I just end up doing a hand polish on it on the journals. Everything was actually just in fantastic shape on this motor. So the stock crank, not even ground, nothing there. Uh, the engine tech bearings, like I said, there were bimetal bearings that went for the rod bearings, for the main bearings, uh, the cam bearings, and the frost plug kit was all from uh, engine tech. All that stuff cost me like 60 bucks for all the bearings, frost plug kit, all that stuff. That's what I said. Check out engine tech, they got some good deals. Uh, the rods, the, the, I used the factory rods on the pistons, factory rods and pistons. The rods were resized with ARP bolts. Uh, it was a uh, $75 for the rod bolts and about $160 for the machine work if you want to get the rods resized. Um, stock pistons just cleaned up. Engine Tech Molly rings. I used the Molly rings. Some guys are going to say, "Hey, you shouldn't use Molly rings on a on um, a used cylinder bore." And uh, I would agree with that, but these cylinder bores were in such good shape. We had less than a thou taper, less than a thou wear, that I went with the molly rings, because the, the, the idea is that the molly rings aren't as forgiving. I ball honed it. I'll put the part number up for the ball hone I used, because I recommend this grit and this hone for this application. Uh, but the molly rings sealed up just fine. I leaked down this, this engine. We had a less than 5% leak down. 
that's pretty that's pretty dang good and obviously the power you saw there was no oil, uh you know nothing huffing out of the breathers when we were dining with it this thing sealed up great with the molly ring so it just goes to show you just because it is a used bore it doesn't mean you have to go cast rings as long as the bore is in good shape if the bore is beat up and you're just trying to slap something together cast rings are probably your best bet in this case we used the molly rings from engine tech which i believe are hastings rings the lifters okay so the lifters at the bottom end um you could use reuse the stock lifters on this thing but i had a set of low melt mileage ls lifters if you're unfamiliar LS lifters, like pre-AFM, uh, like the early LS engines, uh, or LS7 lifters will fit in these engines. They're like exactly the same. Uh, I had a pretty lower mileage, probably half the mileage on a uh, set of uh, LS lifters that were cleaner and stuff. I used those lifters. Could get away with using the factory lifters as long as you keep them clean and they're in still obviously good shape. If you, you gotta be careful, I had someone comment recently about putting through a parts washer. I'd be really careful with putting lifters through a parts washer unless like the, the, the um, detergent or whatever you're using or degreaser or Varsol, whatever you're using is really clean. I prefer just to hand clean them individually. They don't need to go back on the same bore, it doesn't matter. You just gotta make sure you don't introduce debris or dirt into your lifters. Um, the timing set. Uh, we used an engine tech uh, timing set on this, a real basic roller timing set. I'll put a part number up for that. It was like 25 bucks. Yep. Uh, um, I would recommend a Summit Racing timing, uh, timing chain. I'll put a part number up for that. This is a really nice timing chain for the money. Double roller. This one we're running are just a big single roller. But you can see we put a steel timing cover on this. Uh, I'll probably make a short little video of some tricks there. Or I might add it in this video. We'll see. <laughs> and... Uh, so steel timing cover we ended up using just a cheap Summit Racing steel timing cover with some hardware. Uh, we use the stock balancer. So that's what I was gonna talk about with this timing cover business. You gotta watch with the Vortec balancers. They are shorter because we got rid of the reluctor ring behind the, the balancer. So I'll show you a little trick if you wanna save a little bit of money as long as you have maybe a lathe or a buddy with a lathe. You can lathe, you can save some money by reusing the stock balancer, but you have to do one little trick or the balancer will sit in too far. The head gaskets. I made a video about this. I used the Felpro 1094 head gaskets, which is a steel shim gasket. Make sure your deck surface is good and your head surface is good. I got really lucky on this block because both were in nice shape, nice and flat. If, in a perfect world, if you were building this engine, I would highly recommend if you were gonna spend a little bit more, it was just to get the block deck down. Just get it decked to nine inches, use a standard thickness head gasket. Or if, you're trying to, if you have a little bit more budget than we're trying to put into this thing, the best bet would be to deck the block, surface the heads, and use like a 40 thou thick regular head GM head gasket or a small block Chevy head gasket. Um, but I was obviously trying to, we were, the whole idea was to do this as cheap as possible, so we used the Felpro 1094 head gaskets and they're about 52 bucks a set. Uh, the head bolts we used on our Vortec heads here, we obviously know we used our stock casting uh, Vortec heads, is an uh, Engine Tech head bolt set, which is the same as like a replacement Felpro set. Uh, they're like 19 bucks. It's a full set of head bolts, like 19 bucks. Uh, the valve springs, and we did a whole video about how to put beehive springs on the LS heads, or on, sorry, on the Vortec heads. This is like a beehive LS style valve spring. Summit Racing part number 174002. They're like 72 bucks a set. We use the Summit Retainers, which are part number 174003-3. They're like 50 bucks a set, and they're back in stock for you guys that are looking for those. Uh, we used um, the Power Products uh, PVT4326 plus 30 um, uh, keepers. And make sure you go back to my Beehive Spring on LS Head. It's a few videos back. It'll explain all that more in detail. And then we use the Felpro seals, which are SS72861s. So that's what we did. That's all, no machine work done to the heads other than that. Well, I shouldn't say that. For, uh, no machine work done for the, uh, to accommodate the higher lift. You'll find when you take these Vortec heads on, the exhaust valves are always super pitted, like pretty common. So I end up just resurfacing the, the exhaust valves and uh, cleaning up the seats a little bit. Uh, but, you know, something definitely worth doing if you're, you know, trying to build a reliable, good engine. If it's low mileage, maybe you won't have to. Maybe you can clean them up and they'll lap in fine. It's up to you. It just depends on how much you want to spend. I'm just trying to explain to you how I did it, you know, 
we'll keep building a good engine, but as cheap as possible. Um, what else we got here? The Rocker Arms, PRW 1.6 Roller Tip Rocker Arms. Really nice product for the money, about 150 bucks a set. Make sure you get the 1.6's self-aligning rocker arms, okay? They have to be self-aligning because we, we did not add guide plates. We didn't even add, that leads me actually, we didn't even add screw and studs on this deal. I want to show you guys, you don't always have to run screw and studs with the Vortec head. You don't, when you're not really going over 300 pounds of open spring pressure, unless there's something wrong with the head, I, I have never seen one pull that low. You start putting, you know, uh, really heavy springs where you're over 300 pounds on the nose, I've seen them, I've seen them pull. So, never a bad idea to put screw in studs, but with this case, not, I would say not a necessity, but it really depends. Obviously, we didn't have any issues. Uh, stock push rods, stock valve covers, just a Falpro Pro replacement L31 Vortec gaskets for like, the distributor is just like a replacement uh, HEI unit. Uh, the one thing you gotta watch though is a lot of these don't come with a melanized gear for the roller cams. So running a roller cam, obviously this uh, this GM cam is a billet core. You gotta make sure that you run a melanized gear. So whatever distributor you got, you either gotta swap a melanized gear on there, you'll have to measure the shaft size and, uh, and get the right gear for that. Uh, or make sure that the one you're buying does come with a melanized gear, which is basically, uh, um, it's like a surface finish, uh, surface coating. It prevents wear between the, the, the gear and the billet core of the camshaft. If not, they kind of start eating themselves, you could destroy your camshaft. So uh, if you're running uh, this camshaft, make sure you put a melanized gear on there. This intake pack package from Competition Products, really good, really good deal. Uh, the whole package is 207 bucks. Comes with the intake, which is intake I'm really impressed with. I knew it was going to be half decent because when I flow tested it, it actually had pretty high flow numbers for a low rise dual plane. So I, I was I had a feeling it was going to work really good. Obviously, we, we took this thing up to 6200 RPM and it worked really well for a dual plane intake. Um, that intake package comes with the intake gaskets, which are really, really nice quality. I might just try to order those intake gaskets alone. Uh, they're really, I prefer them over the Felpros. Uh, the intake gasket set, the intake obviously, ARP hardware for the intake, uh, carb gasket, silicone, man, it was a quite a really good package, Cards, carb studs, it was a really good package for 207 bucks and it performed really well, very happy with uh, competition products on that one. Um, the carburetor used on the Diamond was a Holley 750, this is probably pretty well sized, if you wanted to you could go down to probably a 650, but no bigger than a 750 I would think. Uh, we end up having to jet a little bit different, and I'll talk about that in the spacer video. Uh, but uh, with the, this configuration, the stock jetting was was pretty close. So uh, spark plugs, we used the TR6 NGK plugs, almost bang on for heat range. So if you're looking for, if you have a similar combination, uh, it's just one heat range colder it was pretty was pretty good for this horsepower level. Uh, you could probably get away with a stock plug, but you know. The, the, the one range colder ended up working really well uh, and uh, it was pretty much bang on. So that was a TR6 NGK plug. All right, let's talk about the camshaft. So this is an LT4 hot cam uh, from GM. I'll put the part number up. If you haven't heard the story on this cam, I bought it off a guy that I was buying other parts from. He had it, he didn't know what it was. I just took it thinking, okay, I'll figure it out. Uh, I noticed the last three digits were 586, which rang a bell and that was the LT4 hot cam. So I got this, this cam for 60 Canadian, so whatever that is, 40, 50 bucks US, which is super cheap. Like this cam retail, I wrote it here, uh, this cam right now is 564 bucks US, which is crazy, okay, for a camshaft. But here is an option for you, for you guys. The Summit Racing 8802 has almost identical specs but it uses a 1.5 rocker arm. If you wanted to, you could run a 1.6 and have even more lift, but then you're into different valve springs and stuff. But if you're run, trying to run the same combination with it, the Summer Racing 8802 cam, which is only 280 bucks, it's like half the price, and the Summit cams are fantastic uh, quality. I'm gonna tell you right now, I've run them before. We've ran them, we ran one of those cams on uh, the um, uh, YouTube 355, made great power, we, and then we had made 700 horsepower when we had boost to the thing. So the cams are really good, but you have to run a 1-5 ratio rocker arm to get the same lift 
as you would this cam with a 1.6 ratio, which is nice. You know, if you want to upgrade down the line, you can add 1.6 rockers on, but you just have to, you know, make sure your valve train will accommodate for that. So that's an option for you if you don't want to run the LT4 hot cam, but you're going to expect the same sort of performance as you would either camshaft, just obviously a different rocker. So not including the distributor, the carb, and the dyno time, I have a little under 1600 bucks into this engine. So for under 1600 bucks, I was able to get 400 horsepower, 400 horsepower plus, uh, and 400 plus foot pounds of torque, which in my opinion is quite good considering the prices of things nowadays. Before someone comments, I do realize I got the camshaft really cheap. So let's let's say for 2,000 bucks or under, depending on what kind of deals you guys are looking for, and what you get the base engine for. Some of you guys might already have this base engine in it, you know, out of one of your trucks or something, so that you might save you 300 bucks right there. But let's just say for about 2,000 bucks or less, you can build something like this as long as you go with that Summit cam that I suggested and not the GM cam, because the GM cam alone is 500, uh, 560 bucks or something like that. So that's a huge chunk of our budget, a quarter, quarter or uh, more than a quarter of the budget, a third of what I spend on it could have went to that cam shop, which I got for like um, 60 bucks. So what I'm saying is horsepower for dollar value is quite good on this engine if you want to spend under uh, $2,000 on a combination. So coming down the pipes for our next Vortec head combinations that we're going to dyno, uh, we're going to add another about half a point, maybe a little bit more of compression. We're going to add a bigger roller cam and we're going to possibly try a single plane and a dual plane intake. Say it's going to be a 355, so just slightly bigger than uh, our 350 here. Uh, and then what I'm going to name the Dingle Ball 2.0. So that's going to be a roller cam setup. Then our, another combination that we're going to be doing is the Dingle Ball 1.0, which uh, I was going to put a roller cam in it, but we're going to give a flat tap of cam one more try because I know a lot of you guys keep asking me about flat tap cams and you guys really like the budget idea of a flat tap cam. So we're going to talk about some precautions and stuff when it comes to flat tap. It's, we're going to try and attempt at another larger flat tap of cam on the Dingle Ball 1, which is 11 to 1 compression, Vortec heads, about max ported, and we're gonna send, put a single plane on it and see, we're gonna try to rev this thing with some anti-pump up lifters, and we're gonna put a pretty pretty hefty uh, flat tap of cam, I think, in it. It'll be a hydraulic, I think. Yeah, it'll give me hydraulic. I'm gonna, get a, I'm gonna get a summit cam for that thing, I think. And it'll be fun, it'll be neat to see, and then we can overlay all three stages, and, and maybe one of these engines will fall into a category of something you guys wanna build. So uh, I appreciate you checking out the video. I know this was a bit of a longer video, kind of boring for the most part, but I know this is information that some of you guys want, maybe not everybody. Um, but make sure you guys um, check out the next video on the spacer and uh, some other stuff we did on this, uh, uh, our L31 uh, budget build and uh, the surprise I got with, uh, with a certain combination of spacers. So, let me, uh, let me thank you again for coming and check out my uh, channel. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. I appreciate your time. Thanks, guys.